Good day everyone and welcome to today's Living Life. I like to be ready and prepared for anything uh, and, and uh, anything at any time. And so um, I have a backpack that I pack in accordance. And um, I have my backpack. This is my regular everyday backpack that I pretty much carry everywhere I go, um, almost every day. And uh, I don't know if you can sense uh, the weight of it, uh, but it is quite heavy. It's probably at least over 10 ki kilograms um, right now. I did not overpack this. Uh, it is my regular. Um, the main thing is my uh, laptop that's in there because sometimes I have to do work outside the office and so forth. Um, I have like two iPads in there, my headphones, my earphones, a battery pack, this and that, and then a whole bunch of accessories. And you know, I have that nice little, um, what do you call that? The Velcro uh, badge thing, in God we trust, because you know, I'm a pastor and all that kind of stuff. And um, I intentionally bought a big bag so I can fit a lot of things. Now the problem is that it is heavy. It is very heavy. And as heavy and big and stuffed with things it is, I still often have things that I want, need, and I don't have. And because it is so heavy still, I regret it. My shoulders ache. Uh, and it is difficult to carry around. And it seems impossible to just have exactly what I need when I need it all the time, which is what I'm trying to get to. And I think this is similar to salvation. We understand the core of what we need to be saved, but we all often over encumber ourselves with lots of other things that weigh ourselves down. Let's read the passage and then we'll continue. Galatians chapter 2, verses 11 through 21. When Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. For before certain men came from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But when they arrived, he began to draw back and separate himself from the Gentiles because he was afraid of those who belonged to the circumcision group. The other Jews joined him in his hypocrisy, so that by their hypocrisy even Barnabas was led astray. When I saw that they were not acting in line with the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas in front of them all, You are a Jew, yet you live like a Gentile and not like a Jew. How is it then that you force Gentiles to follow Jewish customs? We who are Jews by birth and not sinful Gentiles know that a person is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. So we too have put our faith in Christ Jesus that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law, because by the works of the law, no one will be justified. But if, in seeking to be justified in Christ, we Jews find ourselves also among the sinners, doesn't that mean that Christ promotes sin? Absolutely not. If I rebuild what I destroy, then I really would be a lawbreaker. For through the law I die to the law, so that I might live for God. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. We now begin to see uh, what Paul is unpacking and the details of what he's trying to correct and address. And some of the points in today's passage are Jews versus Gentiles, works of the law versus faith, justification and righteousness. The Galatians are Gentiles, right? Unbelievers, people outside, non-Jews, anyone who is not a Jew. While Paul and the other apostles are all Jews. And this is where it all starts too. Though it is not um, all of the tension or the source of all the tension and the problem, but the context, um, but this is the context where the problem is practically played out. The theological disputes are played out in human relationships uh, with people and within the group of people. And again, as I've been talking about, we cannot deny the involvement of people with the gospel. Cephas, or Peter, his relationship and even leadership among the Gentiles in Galatia comes into question because of the way he is living out the gospel. 
the way that Peter was living out the gospel involved his before Christ identity, which is um, his Jewishness, right? His identity as a Jew and the traditions of his of his Jewish backgrounds. And the one thing that the Jews are proud of and ident identify themselves with is the law of God, right? For thousands of years, this is what kept them going. This is what gave them their identity and set them apart as a people of God. And one thing that is confusing in today's passage is that Paul uses the terms Jews and Gentiles interchangeably, not between Jews and Gentiles, but Jews and then Gentiles interchangeably between the traditional before Christ understanding as well as the after Christ understanding and context as well. So Jews, as in those who are not um, Jews, as in those who are not understanding that the Messiah had already come and has fulfilled the law but also the Jews who were the first to receive the Messiah and acknowledge and believe in him. But then there are also the Gentiles who are excluded, who were excluded from the law and therefore as a people, as part of the people of God, but also Gentiles who deny the truth of the Messiah in the person of Jesus Christ. So he uses Jews in two ways, Gentiles in two ways, talking about Peter and then about actual Gentiles and so forth. And that's kind of confuse, confusing. The practical root um, of the debate and problem uh, in all of this is salvation through the gospel, right? So how and what is salvation? How do you attain salvation? What is the content of salvation? This is the practical root of the problem. And being Jews, uh, being a Jew and coming from that background, Jewish disciples of Jesus are still preoccupied with the matter of the law and observing the law because that's what they were taught. They were drilled. They memorized it, you know, as much as they could. And every day their preoccupation was observing the law, follow the law, obey the law, the commandments. And the first sign um, of the law and its observance is even before they are able to speak and even really understand anything while they, uh, when they are an infant, or for the males at least, is circumcision that outward sign. And then, so we read today that there is a circumcision group, right? Meaning there was a group of people that insisted on circumcision as part of the gospel or part of their salvation. And to extend my backpack analogy in my introduction, we either overpack, right? But then, and this is true, by the way, I have my main backpack that I showed you that's super heavy, that's black and big and bulky. I also have another small backpack that I call my day pack, uh, where I would fill with smaller things, uh, though just the things that I know that, are, that I will need for the next couple of hours, right? Um, and at home, so I like backpacks, if you haven't guessed, by the way. At home, uh, I have a couple of old backpacks, uh, and old and I don't use anymore, but I still keep them. So sometimes we have a tendency to use different pack backpacks for different situations and circumstances. So we do that sometimes with salvation, depending on who we are with, who, depending on where we are. We, our understanding and our application and living of the salvation sometimes, even without us knowing, adjusts and changes depending on our context. The, the uh, riddle of the impossible perfect backpack, right, which is something that I'm trying to achieve, it doesn't apply to the gospel. Because with the gospel, we know what and how perfect and complete salvation looks like. It is Jesus Christ and faith in Jesus Christ alone. What he did, who he is, what he did, and even what he is doing now. That is the all of salvation, our faith in Jesus Christ that puts us on the way to life. Obedience to the law is a facade. It is, you know, like the facade of my backpack, right? It is just an idea that is incomplete. It is a mask, a mask that hides the reality um, of what is often behind the mask. And that is why we need Christ in us, right? Though we have the tendency to put the mask in front of our faces, Inside, we need Christ so that it is He who lives in us, so that our reality becomes Christ and not I. It is because I in Christ, and that should be our reality and the core of the gospel and salvation.
So what are we do, to do today? We have to accept the gospel as it is. Even though we may not understand, we think it's too simple, we think it's too little, but whatever our response may be, we need to accept it as it is, as Christ himself taught, and as it is written in the scripture. And something I learned a couple of months ago from a pastor is to maybe even write out what saves you. What is salvation? To write it out, and if necessary, to take it to a couple of pastors, right? A couple and see what they say, and when necessary, to cut out, to cross out some things, so that you have nothing more, nothing less of the gospel, of what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be saved, that is, faith in Christ who died for us, who God has sent. That is it. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your word that teaches us, O oh Lord. We thank you for um, even the saints who have come before us that we can learn from. People like Paul and people uh, even uh, in the present uh, around us, O oh God. I pray uh, that you will um, help us to use their help to gain their assistance so that the gospel that we believe in is nothing more, nothing less than what is in the scriptures that is in and according to your word, O oh God. May we not over encumber ourselves with unnecessary things, but Lord, be free and joyful in the core of what the gospel is. We thank you and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. This program is 시청자 여러분의 소중한 후원으로 제작됩니다. 